Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will discuss something very important that is the different types of RNA. So nucleic acid was all about discussing DNA and RNA. Now at many places you would have seen that we talk about mRNA, tRNA, rRNA. So let us quickly see what are each of them. So there are of three types. That is messenger RNA, which is often called mRNA, ribosomal RNA, often called rRNA, and transfer RNA, which is often termed as tRNA. So these are the three types of RNA and each of them perform a specific role in a cell. So let us look at the roles of each of them. Now when I talk about messenger RNA, the word messenger means somebody who conveys information from one place to another. Now here I already told you that DNA, the job of DNA is to store the genetic information. So in this double strand of G DNA, all the genetic information is stored. Right? How is it stored? It is stored in the form of the sequence of the uh, bases, that is the, in the form of codons. So now this information which is stored inside DNA is present inside the nucleus but we need to carry it to the ribosomes to synthesize proteins accordingly because proteins are going to create all different parts of the body right as we know that whatever you see whether it is your connective tissue uh, which has the collagen fibers or you talk about anything which is present inside the cell they are all made up of all those biomolecules so synthesizing the proteins as per the genetic information which is present in dna is very very important in order to pass on this uh, genetic traits to the new individual so who will convey or who will convey this information so this information conveying is done by messenger RNA. So it conveys the information which is stored in DNA to the ribosome. So from DNA, it takes it to the ribosome. So you have the ribosome here. This is this entire part is your nucleus. This is your ribosome and this entire thing is your cell. So messenger RNA will convey the information from DNA to ribosome. Now this genetic information is encoded in a nucleotide sequence which is added, arranged in the form of codons. So each codon will represent an amino acid. So when the M messenger RNA will take the information to the um, RNA, so that looking at each codon, each codon will get converted into an amino acid. So right now you have in the nucleic acid, you have several codons. Right, codon 1, 2, 3, 4. Now each of these codons will get converted into amino acid. So then you will have several amino acids and all amino acids together will form proteins. So that is how nucleic acids will give uh, rise to proteins. So how, that is how proteins will be synthesized. So that is the purpose of messenger RNA. Now what will this ribosomal RNA do? Ribosomal RNA are present in the ribosome. So they are like a central component of the ribosome. So it is present somewhere in the ribosome. And what does it do? This RNA helps to create the proteins. So actually like the messenger RNA will only carry the information from DNA to RNA, DNA to ribosome. But in ribosome, there has to be some somebody who can actually create the amino acids who can actually create the proteins so actual creation of proteins is done by ribosomal rna and since they are the central part of ribosome that is why they are called ribosomal rna the third one is transfer rna what does it do it recognizes it recognizes the sequence of amino acid so whatever sequence like See, the entire process happens in this way. DNA will have the genetic information. In what form? It will have it in the form of codons. Correct? So this will be conveyed to the ribosome by messenger RNA. Now, once that information is conveyed to the messenger RNA, somebody has to recognize, I mean, somebody has to transfer, convert the uh, codons into amino acids. So that part, that is synthesis of proteins is done by ribosomal RNA. Transfer RNA will recognize the sequence of amino acids because if you just convert each codon into amino acid, then you should also know each of these amino acids. You have to recognize the amino acids so that a proper protein can be formed. 
Correct? So that part of recognizing the sequence of amino acids is done by the transfer RNA. So by proper coordination, DNA, messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA all together will help in protein synthesis as per the genetic information which is stored in DNA. So this process, the first step that is transcription, which means the information which is present in DNA that gets transferred to the messenger RNA. That process is called mRNA. So this messenger RNA will have the information. It will come out of the nucleus. It will transport it to the cytoplasm for protein synthesis. Now when the process of protein synthesis starts, what happens? This codon or this information which is present in mRNA gets converted into amino acid. So the transfer RNA will recognize the sequence of amino acids and the ribosomal RNA will synthesize proteins. So this is the entire process or the entire function of the nucleic acids inside a cell. Now let us look at some of the important applications of nucleic acids. DNA has a very important application in the field of fingerprinting. So now you would have often seen that in case of criminal cases or if you want to like if somebody has touched an object with his hand. If you want to know who has touched that object, you can very easily find that out using DNA fingerprinting. What does that do? When you actually look at the fingerprint of any person, you you have machineries to find out the DNA sequence and the sequence of DNA is unique for every individual and it cannot be altered. So looking at the sequence of DNA, you can actually identify whose fingerprint is that and it is extremely helpful in many uh, fields. For example, it, it helps to identify dead bodies. Suppose sometimes it happens that during accident, the body gets really disrupted. So you are unable to identify who was the person who is dead. So using DNA fingerprinting, you, should, you will be able to find the sequence of DNA and that's how you can identify the person. It is also used in forensic lab for research purposes. It also helps in determining paternity. Suppose um, you have a kid and you want to know that who is uh, the father of that kid. So that means you, it, it actually helps looking at the DNA fingerprinting because it will have some resemblance. The sequence of DNA in the child and the sequence of DNA in the father will have some correlation, right? So that means you can identify paternity it also helps to study biological evolution that is which organisms evolved from which organism. So it helps in that field as well. So these are some of the important applications of DNA fingerprinting. Now since we saw that nucleic acids and proteins are very closely related to each other, let us quickly try to understand how they are related and what is the difference between the two. Now structure wise they are quite different. When you talk about proteins they are made up of amino acids. When you talk about uh, nucleic acids they are made up of nucleotides in simple words. But when you talk about the close relation between proteins and nucleic acid it is somewhat like this. These nucleic acids contain the genetic information in the form of the sequence of the nitrogenous bases and the sequence of the nitrogenous bases form codon and each codon represents or each codon gives information about a particular feature. Now what happens is they are carried by RNA and they reach ribosome where each codon gets transformed into amino acid. So the codons here will get transformed into amino acid. And these amino acids will form proteins and these proteins in turn will form different organs of the body. For example, when you talk about say the connective tissue, it is made up of proteins. So similarly, all other proteins, as I said, they have got a diverse uh, application. So it is like everywhere in a living organism, you talk about each and every cell, everywhere you see a lot of proteins being utilized. So protein actually helps in building different body parts. So the pro everything gets designed as per the genetic information present in the DNA. So that is why it is said that the most important function of nucleic acid is the inheritance. That is it holds the genetic code in DNA and RNA and then the protein synthesis happens as per the genetic code.
right so with this we have reached towards the end of our discussion on nucleic acids so we will now talk about the fourth biomolecule thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again